Hello, this is Ploy Brathamanit from Genome Institute of Singapore. In this video, I'd like to present our new software package, Explore, a model-based method to detect differential RNA modifications from direct RNA sequencing data. As the name says, RNA modifications are changes to the chemical composition of ribonucleic acid, which can occur anywhere on the molecules and on any of the ACGT nucleotides. So far, over 100 modification types have been identified. Some are related to splicing, RNA instability, translation, or even diseases like cancer. M6A is one of the most common modifications in which a nucleotide is modified by a methyl group. Well, currently these modifications can be identified at a single base resolution by clip-based methods. The clip-based methods use anti antibodies to buy M6A sites, making the modified reads truncated during reverse transcriptions. Last year, we had a new clip-based method developed in our institute called M6ACE-Seq, which we use it in our validation. I will talk about it later in the resource section. However, these methods ne still need an intervention to RNA molecules and cannot detect modification directly from native RNAs. Thanks to nanopore technologies, we can now sequence RNA directly. As many of you may know, when an RNA is passing through the pore, the magnitudes of electric intensity across the nanopore surface are recorded and used to identify the corresponding sequences. Many studies have recently reported that a modification can also cause a shift in the intensity levels, which can also be used to identify modified phase. Among those studies are EP nano and mice in which a supervised machine learning model was trained to detect M6A sites. On the other hand, Tombow and NanoCompore detect modified sites by comparing between case and control samples. So in this case, any types of modifications can be detected and no training data is required beforehand. Despite the detection of modified positions, well, none of them explicitly estimate the modification rate or how many reads are modified, which is very important in downstream analysis. Imagine when we perform a transcriptome analysis, the common task is to find which transcripts are differentially expressed between samples, right? To do that, we need to come up with a method to estimate transcript expression quantitatively. So similarly, we have developed Explore, a method that not only locates modified sites, but also quantify the modification rates. Then we can use them to detect differentially modified positions in the same way as the transcript expression analysis has been done for many years. And we believe that such differential modifications can make the transcriptome analysis even more complete as another layer of genetic information. Okay, now let me show you how the method actually works. Beginning with sequencing RNA using OSFET nanopore, we've got a signal per read. Then perform base calling and transcriptome alignment using Guppy and Minimap2. Or we can use NFCore NanoSeq, the next flow pipeline to run these steps. After we know which read is aligned to which transcript, an additional step to analyze nanopore signal data is to segment the signal and assign it to the reference sequence. This can be done perfectly by nanopolish event align. All right, after we collect all the reads and lie in the same positions like this, we can then apply explore for all positions. Well, the key idea to develop explore is that we modify the standard to Gaussian mixture model to accommodate multi-sample multi comparison so that differential RNA modifications can be captured. Let me give you a GGACT site 
as a use, use case to describe how the model works, okay? Um, imagine this site have many reads for three samples shown in three different colors here. As we have seen before, when modified reads are mixed with the unmodified, we see a gap in the intensity level, which turns out to be a bimodal distribution in the density plot. Before we move on, I'd like to show the corresponding graphical model along the side, just in case to help me explain the relationships among the model variables mathematically. All right, um, the variable Y here denotes the intensity levels of each read and in sample M. Our goal is to model a mixture of two Gaussian distributions corresponding to unmodified and modified RNAs. In order to guide the parameter estimations, we use the theoretical mean and variance of unmodified RNAs as a prior on these two Gaussians. After a few iterations of variational Bayesian inference, we obtain the two distributions that are shared across samples. We then assign the closer mean to unmodify and the other to modified RNAs. Moreover, the model also learns the probability of each read to be modified, Z and M, which allows us to compute the fractions of modified reads, WM, as an estimate of the modification rate, for example. This we can use to analyze differential RNA modifications. For all the estimated parameters here, Explore generates a single output table to keep them. Here is the output table we will get after running Explore. The table begins with all positions and cameras that we have tested transcriptome wide. Next are the properties of the unmodified and modified Gaussians, means and variances, and the estimated modification rate for each sample. If there are three replicates, it will show all of them here. The final two columns are the differential modification rates, both effect size, which is the mean difference between conditions, and the significance level that we can use to rank the size that are differentially modified. In the next slides, I will show you how accurate the model is for the ranking. We investigated a loss of M6A phenotype for the model evaluation. We first generated Y-type HEC293T cells before and after the knockout of the main M6A writer, method three. And then sequenced both samples using Oxford nanopore and apply export to predict M6A size. As a validation set, we performed the single, the, we performed the single base resolution M6A seq the clip based method that I mentioned earlier, and evaluate the predictions from the explorer against it. We also use the presence of the known M6A motifs, DRACH, in the evaluation as well, as an approximation of the upper bound for, for our accuracy. Among 1 million tested sites, explorer achieves the area under rock curve of 86% to call M6A positions. Let's look at the accuracy in the top positions ranked by Explore. At the top significant 1500 sites, half of them were also identified by M6A CE seq and almost all of the rest are DRACH motifs. What is this telling us? It is telling us that direct RNA sequencing help identify a different set of modified sites that had been otherwise missed. Another interesting thing we found is that the majority of the DRACH motifs are GGACT and AGACT, which are previously known for the main M6A motifs. It is also known that M6A sites are also enriched close to the stop codon, and our results also show the same. These results ensure us that Explore can perform an unbiased search for differential modifications with high accuracy among the top ranked positions. 
What's next is the accuracy of the estimated modification rates. In this case, we generated additional data by mixing the wild type and knockout cells at different ratios, resulting in five samples in total. Then we let export run on all data sets simultaneously. As expected, the modification rates are closely matched to the percentage of the wild type cells in the RNA mixture on average. Let me give you an example of RNF7, a protein coding gene. At the stop codon, we can see a spike of the p-values, indicating this site is highly differentially modified. So at this particular site, if I zoom in, we can see that the estimated modification rates for all five samples are close to the expected, more or less, right? Actually, these modification rates are computed internally from the probability of each read being modified, which is shown in the heat map here. From top to bottom, we can see an increased proportions of modified reads shown in darker colors in order. This shows that the estimated modification rates can be interpreted as fractions of modified reads in a cell, allowing the analysis of differential modification. Remember, we aim to do the same analysis as differential gene expression with the modification rates estimated by export. Now we can do so, and this is how it looks. A good thing is, within each condition, the estimated modification rates of all replicates looks highly compatible. If we look at the scatter plots here, we can also spot the sites that are modified in one condition, but not in the other. For example, the modif modified position on the gene RNF7 shown in the previous slide is one of the small dots here. Okay, I have presented export our new software package for the detection of differential RNA modifications from direct RNA, um, direct nanopore sequencing data. Briefly, raw signals here are modeled by a multi-sample to Gaussian mixture. We have shown that XPOR can identify differentially M6A sites with accuracy over 95% in the top ranks. And the estimated modification rates can be interpreted as fractions of modified RNAs, which we can use as complementary information to transcript expression profiles. All right, now you can try XPOR yourself by simply using pip install it or you can visit our GitHub repository with the link shown in the slide. Finally, I'd like to thank Jonathan, Sho, and Alex who have supervised this project. Also very thankful to Sarah and Yaofei who generated all the data sets. And thank you to my colleagues, Inchen, Chris, Laura, and Angra. Last but not least, I'd like to highlight that the data used in this work is from um, the SGNEXT project, a resource for not only direct RNA-seq data, but also cDNA and a lot more on cancer cell lines. If you want to hear more about the project and transcript quantification for long read data, you can virtually visit the Human Transcriptomics Breakout Session, where my colleague Ying Cheng will give a talk there.